Hi guys! So today we're going to be making some salt dough ornaments. Um, so to get things started, you have you need a cup of flour. So I've already put this in my big bowl so I didn't get flour everywhere in my room. But you're also going to need a half cup of salt and a half cup of water. Let's go ahead and get things started. You're just going to go ahead and pour all your ingredients into your mixing bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and pour my water in. And, ooh, terrible sound. Half cup of salt. Uh, one thing that you may want to remember is these are going to take two hours to bake so before you start this process um ooh, no um before you start this you want to make sure that you have the time to actually finish all right and our half a cup of salt and i got salt i spilled the salt all right so you can get a spoon, or I'm just going to use my hands, and we're going to mix this all together until it comes into a dough. And you can see that my dough is pretty much done now. I'm just going to knead it a little bit just to make sure it gets completely mixed together. Alright, and here is our dough done. So I'm now going to get out the rest of our supplies that we need to make our ornaments. I'll switch to a nice bright pink background to help contain the flower a little bit. But uh, now what you're going to do is sprinkle your surface with flour. If you can do this on a piece of parchment paper, that is the best um, because then it won't even stick to the parchment paper and you can peel it back. But I only had enough parchment paper for my tray, so um, you can also get your tray ready. So I have my baking tray with a piece of parchment covering the whole thing um, because as we get our ornaments done, we're going to be putting them on the tray. Alright, so we have our surface prepped. I'm just grabbing our dough, and I think I'm only going to use half of our dough just to make sure I have enough room, but you can roll out all of it at once if you want. And go ahead and plop it in your surface. And you could spread it out with your hands, or I'm going to use a rolling pin. And if you use a rolling pin, just make sure you flour it a little bit so your dough doesn't stick to your rolling pin either. And we're going to roll it out until... Oops, it's sticking a little bit still. Um, until it's about a quarter inch thick, which is... Should be, like, for me... It'll be like half of my first knuckle. Okay, so my dough is now a quarter inch thick, which you can see here. And, which is, this is actually what it's supposed to be. I lied when I said it was about half my finger. Um, but... We now have this ready. You can, I'm going to use mainly cookie cutters, but you could also just 
freestyle your ornaments with a butter knife. Um, but let's go ahead and grab some cookie cutters. We'll do a heart and just press all the way down, wiggle it around. And if you can pick it up and out, that's great. And I'm gonna grab some other ones. I have a musical note, so I'm gonna do a musical note. You're just gonna do whoop, whatever you want until you've filled up your so here I'm doing a bigger one with our butterfly. And when you pick them up, you want to be kind of careful because they'll stretch and pull if you have them too, or you don't hold them flat enough. Um, so you just want to be careful about it. I think I'm actually going to do it right down here. This last space, I'm going to do a freestyle, um, what do I want to do? How about, I don't actually have a circle cookie cutter, so I'm just going to try and do... And this one, I don't really want the stem, so I'm just going to push it down so it only uses the part I want. And I still have a little bit of the stem there, so I'm just going to cut that part out. Okay, and all of your scraps you can just roll up into a ball and then roll out again to make even more ornaments. So I'm going to put this back with our other dough for now. And all the other ornaments that we've made, they right now they're not quite ornaments. We still have to put the holes in so we can hang them up. So in order to put the holes in, um, you just need something to poke the holes. So I'm going to use straw, but you can use, you could use like a pen or a pencil or even like a bamboo skewer, whatever you have handy, that'll just make a large enough hole. And when you do your holes, you just want to make sure that they are far enough away from the edge that when it bakes, it's not going to break. And once you have your hole, you can go ahead and place it over on your cookie sheet that has the parchment paper. So this one, I think I'm going to put the hole right here. We have that one. Um, when you have something that's like long and skinny like this, uh, you don't necessarily want to put the hole up here because it's going to put a lot of stress on your long skinny part. So I'm actually going to put, I think I'm going to put the hole right here for these ones. We have one. And one. So, we can now see they're all ready to go, and you're just going to repeat this with all of your salt dough. So, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay. 
you can see here with this one I did a little snail I don't know um, this indent I didn't cut all the way through so if I flip it over you can see it's still all in one piece but I believe this will stay baked when we bake it and I'll have a nice little shell indent on it Alright, here's the last of our so salt dough. Um, I did not roll this very evenly. You can tell here that it's really thin all over here. It's pretty thick. Um, so I don't think that'll be too much of an issue. Just one thing to be watch to watch out for. If you roll it out thinner, your dough will probably cure faster than if it's thicker. Um, and if it's thicker than a quarter inch, it may take even longer than two hours to cure. But I'm going to go ahead and actually roll out this. Now we can see it's a little thinner. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out some more. No. No. So you can see with that one, I didn't have enough flour on the surface down here, um, so it was harder to pick up and it deformed a little bit. To prevent this, you can use a spatula, like a cookie spatula, to help you pick them up, and that'll help with that, or just make sure you put down more flour. Okay, and here are all of my ornaments. And you can see I have them pretty close together. Um, I don't think they should spread at all, so I think you can have them close. Um, and because we're basically just dehydrating them in the oven. We're not really like baking, baking them. Now these are going to go in the oven at... 250 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours.
so we're back. Um, these baked for two hours, and you can see they're all nice. Um, I have quite a few who that puffed up. You can see um, one way if you don't want them to puff up, I think you can prevent is by poking holes in them with a fork. Um, and then you could just make that like the back of your ornament. Or you could just have some nice puffed 3D ornaments if you want. Um, so now we got to move on to our next step. We got to make them look all nice and purdy uh, with paint. So I'm going to take, I'm only going to paint a couple of them right now. But do this one and we'll do a butterfly. Alrighty. So, I have my lovely plate and my salt. Move these down so they're in frame for you. Um, one thing to remember, you want to make sure that these are completely cool before you paint them. Um, they actually took a surprisingly short amount of time to cool when I was doing it. It only took uh, maybe 10 minutes, I think, when I checked on them. Although it could be even less. So I took, I waited for 10 minutes and then they were completely cool. So we're going to go ahead and grab some paint. Um, you want to use some like acrylic paint or craft paint. Um, so you can, of course, paint however you want. Um, but you're just going to apply a nice coat of paint. Um, the place that I found this craft, they originally used spray paint as their base coat. If you have that, you can totally use it. It is a lot faster than just applying acrylic paint. But not everyone has that, so it is up to you and what your uh, what you have on hand. You can see here that I'm painting the edges. Um, I'll also eventually paint the back of it as well once this front dries. But
So this one, the top coat is basically dry now, so I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and finish off the edges that I missed as well. Here are 
Oh, dann die beiden Späten sein. Here are my four ornaments. I'm gonna let them dry a little bit longer and then I'll put the strings through. And I of course have a whole tray full left to paint, but I think I'll save those for another time. One thing I forgot to add is that once they are all painted, you can, if you have it, you can go ahead and add a clear sealant on all of them, uh, front and back, and that'll just help the paint stay on even longer. Preserve it even more. Guys, um, and for, I'm gonna paint these but then you need to let the paint dry, of course, before you put your string in. But I will go ahead and show you. Okay, so we have our piece of string. Um, you can make it as long or as short as you want. Um, but then, of course, you just poke it through after you've painted it. And pull it through. And... Up here, we'll just tie a knot, so if you go around, so you have a cross, and then you can push these ends through the loop that you made. Oh, come on. And then pull tight. So you'll pull on both ends. I'm, not, I'm gonna paint this first, so I'm not actually gonna pull it tight, but that is what you would do. And then you have a nice hanger for your ornament and you can hang it up wherever you want but we gotta paint um i hope you guys enjoyed this and uh make sure to post any of your creations on the chat i would love to see it and i think that's it next craft will be on monday so I'll see you guys then. Bye.